Okay. Well, I, I, uh, when I got the invitation, I said, absolutely, man. I, anything to do with freedom, baby, I'm ready. I'm ready. And anything to do with a festival, you know what that means, right? It means it's going to be a good time and it's going to be good people. So I just said, uh, i got to be there, man. And my, my job is to be the ambassador to Las Vegas. And if you need anything at all, just ask me. I'll take care of you. I can get it done for you, well, whatever Elvis, you need. We love you dearly, and we appreciate the fact you took time out to come on the Exceptional Conservative Show. Uh, and introduce us to Las Vegas. There is nothing more real than Elvis playing for us. And, and, and I know that you got to introduce and, and welcome everybody at 6.30 here uh, to kick off Freedom Fest 2015. But could you just give us one more oh, soft go, ballad? Now, my real name is Steve Connolly, and, and I do a show every night at the Four Queens Hotel and Casino. All right. Four Queens, it's a 9 o'clock show. So right after I'm here, I'm going to run over there and do my nightly show. I'd like to invite everybody to come on down and see it. Uh, you got to buy a ticket, though, but right here, I'm free, baby. I'm right here, free. 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 So I'll sing well, Love Me. With a two-song two limit. Tender. <laughs> <laughs> love is sweet. <laughs> right, that's exactly right. <laughs> Never let me go. Don't let me go, man. Grab me, squeeze me. Love me. Tender. Love me true. Oh, all, all of my for my darling, I, I love you, and I always. There's summer on my lip, man. Look at my lip. You got the same. Yeah, looks good, man. We curl the lip, baby. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Steve. Tell everyone where you will be for the entire week while they're here in Las Vegas for Freedom Fest. Entire week. Come on down to the Four Queens Hotel and Casino, nine o'clock show, and I'll be there uh, Saturday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wait a second. What am I forgetting here? I'm not there Sunday, Monday. Good. Every day but Sunday, Monday. Yeah. All year. That's good. God so, bless you. Rock and roll, baby. Thank you so much. It's been a Thank great you. honor and a privilege. Hey, same uh, here. Honor and a privilege myself, man. Thank uh, you very much. That was hey, Stephen. Don't step on this blue suede. Don't shoes. step on don't the blue suede. Shoes, shoes. Man. Look at those shoes. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is, I, I mean, this is already better than 2014's Freedom Fest. What a way of kicking off the exceptional conservative show. You all thought that we were just kidding around, but no, we, we're bringing in the heavy guns for tonight's show. And Ken uh, knows heavy. <laughs> Well, actually, Elvis looks like he's been on a diet. Yes, yes, <laughs> this is the thin Elvis stamp, this not the, the fat Elvis stamp. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer to say fit and trim, baby. Fit and trim. <laughs> See, this is the martini There level. you go. You look good after death, man. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am joined uh, by the great quandary of conservative, conservative talk host uh, on SHR Media. I want to thank uh, Sako, uh truly for putting this particular program together. He's actually saved it uh, from the abyss of failure. So thank you so much. <laughs> the underground professor, Dr. Michael Jones, is here. Uh, Michael, would you say a few words? I need to get a picture with Elvis so I can sit down on the... Uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Freedom oh. Fest 2015. <laughs> At uh, recommendation, do not fly United. <laughs> <laughs> They've been having computer problems all day. What's up with that? Because we've had that. Wall Street Journal was shut down, and Wall Street itself stopped trading for a while because of computer glitches. So I find that very interesting, wondering what's going on. I think it might have something to do with the tectonic shifting of Ken moving from Washington all the way out to Vegas. But, yeah, I'm uh, going to agree with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Ken, uh, Ken is here in his Ronald McDonald outfit. Thank you. Yes. So. With the shoes. <laughs> With the shoes, man. I'm telling you. Listen, you got to make a statement when you're coming here. Listen, Chris Casey just passed us. Uh, we got Sackhead Sean here, uh, Sako, and people are just streaming by. So this is what's going to happen for the rest of the week. Uh, we definitely will be speaking with so many great uh, individuals. Uh, who are involved uh, in the movements, whether conservative or libertarian, or economics, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but they're all going to be streaming through. I saw Armstrong Williams a little <laughs> earlier. 
You go, man. You go, man. Go. <laughs> you uh, can see what Elvis just did. You can. <laughs> Elvis this is, is why he was not shown below the waist in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elvis is the bomb. Listen, um, I want to thank the good people of Freedom Fest. Yeah, for the sexy. I was just saying that on air. Yes. Yeah, that's a sexy move, man. I'm going to take that home to my wife. <laughs> Try that on her. Wow. I'm telling you, it's great when you have Elvis in front of your radio program. I mean, it just people are just, just loving this man. There you go. There you go. He's too sexy. Uh, too I want to also thank the good people they at made Freedom women Fest. Swoon and that was dangerous. Uh, 2015. Uh, and uh, the, the prince of the air, uh, Sean Lewis, uh, for making certain that I was put in front of Snoop Dogg and <laughs> Sherman And George Hensley. Jefferson. Moving on up. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> this is... This is when you know you have moved up to the big time. You get Elvis to start off your show. Yeah, but I got Leslie Nelson, man. You got... <laughs> uh, so with Sherman Hemsley here and Snoop Dogg, that makes three black people. So... <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I had to put them all on one wall. All on one wall. Yeah, next to Martin Short. You can't get blacker than Martin Short. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but truly, this is going to be one of the greatest experiences. Sean Lewis has now joined me on my right. I Thank have you. the great Dr. Michael Jones uh, on my left, uh, only because he is a constitutionalist and should change the left all the way around. Um, but we are just thrilled uh, to be here today. Uh, comments, Sean Lewis, the great Sean Lewis. Well, first of all, you know, we sit up all day. We do all this hard work. And poor Sacco has been working himself to the bone all day. And, and I can't Very say Sacco. thank you enough. Exactly. We've been putting all this effort into it, uh, uh, Clint, Sacco, and I. getting to, And then at 6.02, um, the exceptional one comes sauntering in. <laughs> Just sauntering. And, and really, if you saw him walk, uh, uh, Doc, you'd know it was a saunter. Oh, yeah. It was a saunter. Complaining he didn't have any green M&Ms. Right. And, and then he sat down and looked at Sako and said, are we on yet or what? Which was the strangest thing in the world for him to say. And then, uh, and then you know, he, he goes on when he wants to go on. And then he gets Elvis to sit down and do 15 minutes on the show because, because of your hard work. Yes. But he kept him here, right? <laughs> so... I mean, you want to talk about phoning it in. He phoned it in with Elvis. <laughs> Not only that, but he managed to ruin one of the classic songs by eubonically singing along with Elvis. He asked me to. <laughs> he asked me to. I, I told him, don't let me destroy it. I mean, <laughs> how are you going to make your um, royalties with me singing on this song? It is. A, <laughs> a, a, all joking aside, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Both of you gentlemen here. Um, it, it, it's truly a wonderful thing. Hopefully we'll get the underground professor to maybe sit and do a show at some point later in the week. That'll be a blast. Yeah, I'd um, love to do that. This is a, an amazing event. It really is. The amount of people that are here, the good people that are here. We did an interview earlier with a young man who's a millennial. Uh, the book's right to your left called Disinherited. Disinherited. Um, a great young man talking about how millennials essentially are getting uh, uh, shafted and that they need to uh, start thinking different in order to secure their future. So that's really good. Um, it, there's just so many cool people walking around. We saw uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West stop by earlier and said hello. Tomorrow we have Chris Peranto who's going to be here all day um, for book, doing a book signing. Tonto. Tonto is going to be here. And the, the Donald's going to be here. I mean, there's so many great things happen here. And, and that's not to mention all of the different speakers. I mean, there's what, 53 I think was last count. Yeah. And you have everything from uh, um, economics, which is a very, very important issue right now, not only in this country, but around the world. Um, especially everything that's going on with Greece, China, et cetera. And Chris Casey's actually gonna join us later to talk about that on Sackheads. Yeah. But you also have you know, people who talk about freedom and what it means to them. And talk about to the point, there's a gentleman speaking who lived in communist China under Mao. And I think when you're talking about freedom and what this means to our country, that's somebody you sit and listen to and understand the true uh, uh, horrific lifestyle that you lead when you're not allowed to control your liberty and your freedoms. It's a scary thing. So people like that need to be heard. And this is such a great crowd for it because I think this is going to get the word out and the word going. So, And of course, we have so many great interviews coming up all through the network. And if you can't get the live 
uh, the live interview. We're going to post them all on our Spreaker page under Freedom Fest. Every interview will be on there and available for you to listen to. But more importantly, I can go home now because I've met the underground professor and the exceptional one himself. And live mm. to tell about and it. And live to tell knows. about it. That's the most amazing thing. And, you know, Professor, and, I just... And I brought Elvis to the party. Oh, I can't even believe... <laughs> <laughs> just like eating my steak, he takes credit for everything. But, but Professor, I have to be honest, you're not nearly as frightening in person. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen me at the dark yet. <laughs> I, and it was funny because I've never met the Professor, but I spotted him about 52 feet away as he was walking in. He's got this beautiful gray beard that is just... I mean, it has its own area code. Well, actually, it was a TSA that was chasing him. <laughs> well, that's how I, but that's how I found him, right? I didn't think they were going to let him off the plane. And when you have 15 TSA agents chasing you through, well, it, it draws a small Mexican family living in it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since I take them on my uh, tax deductions anyway. Well, that's uh, good. Right. So that, 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 are they going to go to school soon? Uh, that's a topic for a different time. I'm so, offended you'd include the Polish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's talk about food. You know nothing, we don't talk about food on the radio. With nothing the offends here. you. That's the best part about this. Um, and, and really the, the other highlight was obviously the exceptional one. I'm walking through, and the only black guy here, because Alan West was in talking, and I look and I said, well, that's got to be Ken, because yeah. but the odds were in my favor, right? Yeah, yeah. I, at this point, it was four to one odds that I was going to be right. Literally, and I knew it wasn't Alan West. Literally, at mm. all conservative or Republican events, we have to be interchangeable. So when <laughs> one black person leaves, the other one has to come in. Well, it's like Fox News, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I figured like, there must have been something happened to the black community for a black guy to show up for news. Yeah. Now, now the, the strange thing really was that when I walked over uh, to the table, uh, Sackhead Clint oh, asked look at me, this. thank you bacon, so much. Bacon wrapped. Bacon wrapped. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is, is good this living, Is this a show man. right thank now? No, so much. No, thank you. I don't no, want to. We're not prima man. donnas here. <laughs> uh, yes, please. I'll oh, have the beef wellington. Thank you. Yeah, just leave the plate. Listen, <laughs> we're getting treated with snacks right now, everybody. We are Very much. so professional. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to eat these on the air. Who are you kidding? Mm, please. Uh, and, and the professor's already gotten drinks. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is uh, look, amazing. I got my drinky drinky. Got your drinky drinky. <laughs> and when I saw Ken, Sacco's I came running kids. up. Sacco has little kids around the country walking up saying, I drinky drinky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, Clint, but, or Sean, when I saw Ken, I came running up thinking he was giving away free hamburgers. What? <laughs> because it wasn't Ronald McDonald after all. Well, I thought it was Ronald the, from the hood. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, okay, this is I, I outstanding. Just, I just came back from having also lunch at Gordon Ramsay's Burger Ooh. downstairs. How was it? Oh, look um, at this. Uh, actually, it was excellent. It really mm. was. It was an excellent um, burger. Oh. Uh, and well, then you don't want this. Oh, no. This is like <laughs> someone's steak on the it's plate. It's like someone's yeah. steak. You can have it, sir. <laughs> You can have it, because I'm going to take that from you, too. Uh, mm. Oh, my God, this is good. Oh, I'm sorry, this is so unprofessional. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from Vegas, um, where they have released the felons to be on radio. <laughs> the inmates are running the asylum. The inmates are part of the asylum. Who are you kidding? We were built into this. Uh, so... Ken, obviously, there's I'm a lot of... I'm building my own sanctuary city right here. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's an abundance of speakers. There's an abundance of, of different seminars and anything. What are you looking forward to seeing first? Oh, I would love to tackle Thomas... Mo um, uh, Steve Moore. Steve Moore. I would love to tackle him. He's walking around now, and I actually wanted to tackle him and bring him on the air, but Be Elvis beat him to it. <laughs> Uh, I can't think of a better way. I know I know that there are people who have gone to the exceptionalconsiderationshow.com uh, to try to get into the chat roll. I'm not there tonight. We're not opening up the chat roll. This is just, this is probably the wildest that you've heard. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. <laughs> no, you have not. I am so, so laid back and quiet and serene. Yeah. <laughs> that's until I get on the uh, Sackheads radio Yeah, show. I was going to say, that'll all change a little bit later, uh, I know. On the Underground Professor show, there you go. Mess their shows up, but please. Yeah, please, whatever you do, don't don't mess with the under, uh, uh, the <laughs> exceptional one himself. We oh, can't have that. This is the person that I wanted to speak to most who has one of the biggest... How you doing? Uh, listen, 
uh, Steve? Steve Moore. Moore. Yep. You have one of the biggest assignments <laughs> I do. here. Yeah. The whole free to, fate of the free market movement depends on exactly. my winning we, this debate tomorrow. If you <laughs> don't win the debate, all of capitalism will die. Do you have any die. doubt? Do you have any doubt? No. <laughs> absolutely not. A Brit could beat Krugman in a debate. But if we have to rig it, let me know. <laughs> Just let me know now. I, I, I have some you know, friends. Here's how it's going to go. Down goes Krugman. Down goes Krugman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're listening to Steve Moore, who is one of the world's great economists, uh, who has the assignment of taking on uh, some guy. What's his name? Paul Krugman. Paul Krugman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where he got his degree from. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> well, he has a Nobel Prize. So. Yeah. But then so does Barack Obama. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I, that's really yeah, not a tech. Yeah. That, that's, not be yeah. Yeah. that's not being important when he got one. Yeah. But, uh, Mr. Moore, there are a great many concerns that we have in, in America right now, Puerto Rico being one, yeah. Greece being another, uh, China and its slowing of yeah. its economy. Uh, in all sincerity, as we're... Well, this is the collapse here. of socialism, right? This is exactly the point I'm going to make tomorrow, is that, uh, uh, you know, socialism is on trial right now. It's failed in Puerto Rico. It's failed in Greece. It's failing in Europe. It's failing in some of these South American countries. It's failed in Connecticut. It's failed in Illinois. <laughs> it's failing in Chicago. To be fair, you that's know, because we haven't spent enough where, money. Uh, yeah. you know, show me any place where socialism works. Well, and that's the point. You know, look, socialism makes people poor, and it destroys countries, and it destroys the finances of the world economy. And that's what we're living through right now. And until these countries and states and cities move away from socialism, you know, they're going to be in this in this hole for a long, long time to come. But I think. You know, we are seeing firsthand. And by the way, wh when is the last time anybody in the conventional media ever explained to people why Greece is failing? Well, Greece is failing because you've got all these people in the wagon and nobody's pulling the wagon anymore. Right? <laughs> well, they're, they're, just, they're just waiting for a big hill. Yeah, that's right. And then they exactly. can all sail down right. together. Germany is going to come to the rescue. Yeah. Or well, or the Krugman United did United answer States, that. And nobody's coming yeah. to the rescue. Exactly. It's yeah. austerity. That's what it's caused it, according to Krugman. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, came well, out and right. said that. But they've been like living 30, austerity. 40 percent beyond their means for a long time because yeah. they, don't, they have too many people... Um, in on welfare and too, too few, right. you know, half of the young people aren't working, and two thirds of the people are retiring before the age of sixty. I mean, who, who, who's going to support that system? Exactly, mathematically. You know, Margaret Thatcher, Thatcher yeah. used to say, you run know, socialism works money. until you run out of other people's yeah. money, yeah. and exactly. that's what's happened in these countries like Greece, well, and it happened in Puerto Rico. When are these countries, and especially in our country, going to live to the ideal of? what the average American citizen has to do with. You have to balance your checkbook. Yeah. You can't pay out more than you make in. Well, Nobody will allow it. You know, we're only borrowing a trillion dollars a year. I mean, you know, what are you, what's your problem here? No, I mean, it's year after year, and it's a big, it's a, you know, I think the American people, this is why I think we're going to see a, just a monster election for the Republicans in 2016, because people realize something is going fundamentally wrong with our country. We're taxing too much, we're borrowing too much, we're spending too much, we're regulating too much, we're litigating too much. And, you know, by the way, you get government off the back of these businesses and the private sector, and we're going to see a big boom in this country in 2017. But mm. we're going to need a regime change. <laughs> yeah. Conservatives, though, not establishment. And that means yeah. the most important thing for this country is A, that I win that debate tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, B, and B, that she does not become president in 2006. Uh, yes. Anyway, it's great to be with you guys. Thank really you so appreciate much for what you do for the conservative <laughs> movement. And your voices are so badly needed. Thank, Thank you very, you. very much. Steve Moore, economist, who has the fundamental responsibility of saving capitalism in our free world. Uh, I think I'm going to break something. Stop those says, don't touch. Don't touch. <laughs> that's, his, don't touch. that's his wheelhouse right there. I Leave forgot. it alone. I thought he was caged. <laughs> yeah, you know, he spells better, too, in public. You know, so that's great. Absolutely wonderful. Psycho. You know, I've, I've laid out the argument, Ken, that you cannot make him a sackhead. What? Uh, yes. You, you can't. Yeah. He can be promoted. No, Sean, I was talking to Sean about it earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Meritocracy. Well, you can't vote. You can't vote in another country. That's essentially right. what you're sure doing. You can. See, unless he's an illegal alien, that's not allowed. Well, that's right, but we're we trying to do. set the example against that that's right exactly now. That's exactly what right. it is. So we, we need a border. <laughs> right there. <laughs> And we'll, we will invite him to our microphone quite literally, but unlike the Mexican president, he doesn't have the right to criticize us while he's here. You know what I mean? Right. That's oh, okay. <laughs> or ask for more money. Or he can ask for more money. That's He's not getting it, but he can ask all he wants. We're drawing limits here. <laughs> I, I love Steve Moore when he said, you know, we're, we're just spending a trillion dollars. You know, yeah, is that all? Just, just yeah. a trillion. The problem is a trillion here and a trillion there, and pretty soon you're talking real money. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
you know, actually, with it's a like gambling. Dollars, we could do something, some real damage downstairs. Yes, we could. Um, we could do a lot of damage with that. Um, easy, easy, easy. I'm going to. You know what, Saku, do we have an AED on hand just in case? We might need an AED I'm over already here. Out of the ice bucket tonight. I brought. <laughs> Are we do, we're not doing live stream today. No. We're not doing live. We may do it tomorrow, but we're not doing it today. So no one can see the facial expressions I have. Which is good. Yes. Which is probably good. Um, yes, don't have to worry the, about being divorced tonight. Uh, half the world will be much less insulted right now. Uh, <laughs> So, obviously, we know Krugman... Make sure they bring some of that back. <laughs> You're talking, of course, of the beef Wellington. Yeah, of course. Now, um... <laughs> oh, the beef. Show me the beef. Yes, absolutely. It was yeah, you got to be careful because some people are trans bovine. <laughs> I, I identify as a carnivore, so um, I would prefer you address me as such. <laughs> so, we have a Chick-fil-A. I say that's offensive. <laughs> I'm offended. Uh, you're always offended. <laughs> I'm offended that you're offended that I'm offended. Uh, the good, the good Reverend Doctor. Um, what, what's the couple of the important things that you'd like to see this week, or what are you putting aside to make sure that you're involved in for these speeches and etc. The red meat is fun, but I want to hear some specifics. Instead of telling me there's a problem, I want to know what you're actually going to do about it and yep. why. And I want to hear constitutionally based decisions and and solving because too often they go up there and think that it's their side of government that's going to be better so it's still more big government it's just you know a different it's, player yeah well exactly it's like getting traded from one team to the other but it's still the same team you can change the uniforms it doesn't really matter what, what, whining and kicking it down the uh <laughs> down the road it's not working anymore well <laughs> first of all ask Sako. he's been whining and kicking it down the road for us for a couple years now it hasn't worked ever um <laughs> <laughs> but it is a valiant effort. It, it yeah. is very valiant. No, I, I agree with you. I think that it's star substance is starting to become an important thing. And listen, there's a reason why Donald Trump's number two in the polls right now. Yeah. Uh, he, he's talking about issues nobody wants to talk about. He, he's being the guy that, and I really appreciate this, you know, when Carly Fiorina hit the table, she went right after Hillary because she could, as a lot of people said. Um, it wouldn't be the feminist argument, etc. Mm -hmm. Donald is calling out both the left and the right on immigration because he can. Right. He has nothing to lose, really. The establishment viewpoint. Exactly. Yeah. And, and people are reacting, you know, to not have a politician running for office and doing that well. And My we can fear of Donald, though, is that he's not serious, that this is I, him getting involved, but I think he'll pull out. You know what? I, I, I'm going to disagree with you. I'm I hoping he doesn't. You know, I, I don't <laughs> think he... I don't think he entered the last time serious. Yeah. I think he wanted to get out there and test the waters. He saw the reaction. He threw some things out there. They were semi-controversial, but he tested the waters. This time, he came out swinging so hard and really on a topic that could carry him through the general election. I mean, if really, if he keeps going and he has... It, obviously, we need to hear about his foreign policies. You need to hear about his military ideas, et cetera, et cetera. But if he stays with that sort of content and he's that in their face about it, he could very well pull off into, I, I'm saying it, it, nothing's out of reach, right? Nothing. Well, out of all of them, he's the only one I think that besides maybe Ted Cruz, and I say maybe, that has yeah. has a philosophy that I can agree with on how to fix the problems. Yeah. My, I, I wish we could make a Frankenstein candidate. There's a bunch of different things from a bunch of different people that I... <laughs> You're talking about Ken running? No, about Ken running. <laughs> No, hey. I, four Republicans. I'm offended that you're offended that you didn't use that <laughs> remark earlier. <laughs> four conservatives, four Republicans, because there are a bunch of great guys and gals out there that have great ideas about different things. Obviously, it's really early. We haven't heard their substance yet. But, you know, when it comes to economy, I want to hear Carly Fiorina. Because I, I don't think her and Trump are the two by far who know more than I would say about everyone else. Um, and that includes Scott Walker, because they've actually built and grown business, right? right. Um, you know, you have Senator Ted Cruz, who's right up there. You know, Marco Rubio has good things to say. I don't agree with him on a lot of things, but he has some good things to say. So we have this pool of, of these candidates. I wish we could turn into one super candidate, like to take the best of all of them, uh, um, like, like the $6 million man, right? Let's right. start. <laughs> let's yeah, start putting, yeah. we, we have the technology. <laughs> let's do it. Um,
The only candidate I really like is me, and I wouldn't vote for me. I, I wouldn't vote for no. you either, and no. here's why. <laughs> you didn't pick up more beef Wellington when it came by. There you go. And you had an opportunity but to get that for me. But you I was me. the one that got it here. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> like Elvis. See, but you have, to, you have to get to a point where you're willing to vote for a candidate that you don't trust. Right. Uh, and that's why I like Hillary. Because yes. she accepts the fact that she can't be trusted. She can't be trusted. She, <laughs> and she'll tout it all over the place, right? She'll throw it in people's faces. I mean, look at, look at how friendly she is to the media. She ropes them literally into a corral and starts walking them around all over the place. Right through the ropes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're reporting tonight from the great state of Nevada in its most beautiful uh, and central city, Las Vegas. Uh, no, not Reno. Well, uh, <laughs> Hey, we drove through Reno on the way here. It's still Reno. Yeah, yeah. It still smells like Reno. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we smelled it in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> That's my aftershave. Yeah. Uh, this is the Exceptional Conservative Show with great guests, uh, host, uh, the underground professor, Dr. Michael Jones, uh, Sean Lewis, the president and CEO of uh, SHR Media, uh, Sockhead sock sock Socko. I promoted him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some retaliation. It's all of a sudden like the UN where they need another country to recognize it. I'm just Ken, Ken's enough. put it up there, but he needs somebody else to jump on board right. for it to happen. I'm not ready to announce. Down with Israel while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> down with Israel. Well, I bet you I got a coalition there, boy. <laughs> I well, hear a rumor that there are a bunch of Jews there. <laughs> <laughs> Get them! <laughs> Well, you know, we're talking about candidates, and that's an interesting point, too, is we haven't heard anything really yet. And again, it's early, but I'd like to start seeing people's stances on the U.N., because I think for conservatives, that's a big deal right now. Everything that's going on with Russia and the Ukraine, the U.N.'s involved, yeah. but more importantly, the U.N.'s treatment of our closest ally in Israel. Right. No, I, I'll be very frank with you. I really believe that we have established the substances of the two groupings of Republicans that are running, those that are conservatives that are considered entertainment value, like Ted Cruz and um, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the rest of the rhinos who are being joined by Kasich at, on the 21st of this particular month. Uh, so literally, we have a situation. Krispy Kreme. Yeah. You know, you have the, the establishment who have already uh, made note that if you are against uh, the U U.S. Chamber of Commerce's uh, immigration policies, then you're not rhino enough yes. uh, to support us. Uh, well, you're they, not rhino they enough. They've won up, Ken. Now they, you've got uh, Carl Rove out there trying to abolish the Second Amendment. You know? oh, well, so, you know, that's really just kind just of an iffy one. They, yeah. That's number two for a reason, right? It's not right. the most important for one. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I think what we want is just somebody we don't have to hold our nose for. Well, and we that's vote. but yeah. that's the problem that I really have is you do hold your nose if you go in and you choose to vote. Oftentimes, you know, in the last I'll take the last election again, and I'll say it time and again, Mitt Romney isn't a horrible human being. He's not a horrible human being. No. Mitt Romney is a good business guy. He has good economic ideas, but he wasn't the conservative that should have ran. Um, and, and he he. I believe he has a part in government on the federal level. I, I, I he needs to be in a cabinet. You know the why million... people like Trump? <laughs> oh, we going to Trump now? Yeah, you don't. Sorry, I thought like I was Trump. making a point. You were making a point, but I wanted to <laughs> for a commercial, everybody. On my own show, <laughs> on my commercial-free show from Las Vegas, where I'm not getting anything out of this deal uh, besides love and affection. <laughs> and I and that's this, mostly from the professor. That's mostly. <laughs> and I get Nessa, get Nessa six sit next to uh, Snoop. And <laughs> Herman Sherman and Herman Hemsley, um, but the people the people like Donald Trump because he says what they think. Yes, I agree. Uh, and they are not ashamed uh, of being offensive. And there are too many of us who are running around in the Republican Party trying to tell people not to offend other people. Can we just get along? And that type of theorem is not going to work in election 2016. That's great when you're trying to order a lunch with a group of people. <laughs> Let's not fight. Let's go. I'll get along and get our lunch order in. But when you're running a government, it's a very scary thing. You better be offensive. R right? <laughs> you have, well, not even offensive. You don't have to be offensive. You just have to not be afraid to say what is needed to be said. Exactly. And those of us on the right, when somebody like Trump says something that needs to be said, and then the left and the mainstream media bastardizes them as some insane person 
there needs to be more protection and people really need to step up on that. There's not enough conservatives and even hardcore conservatives are afraid to side with Trump on the immigration issue because they're afraid they're going to be bastardized. Oh, forgive me. I haven't uh, started my sanctuary city yet. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's the next thing. We have with us a very special gentleman. Uh, live uh, from Las Vegas, Nevada. You know him as the official head of the NRA. <laughs> we know him and love him as Sackhead Clint. Sackhead, it is a great honor. Clint, it's a great honor to have you with us today on the Exceptional Conservative Show. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> to finally meet you in person. <laughs> so is it true the Sackheads wear two sacks in case one falls off? <laughs> so... I want to. I'm sorry. I was putting my headphones on. So I want to make sure I have. Are your, are, was your question? Is it true the sackheads have two sacks? Is two that, sacks. Yes. 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 Yeah. We do. Have, so there are two sacks. That's why involved. we can't promote Saco then. Cause, right. Because you, you're limited to two sacks. Well, we had them neutered. <laughs> well, there's a coupon. <laughs> right. <laughs> two for. <laughs> There's a reason we brought grooming equipment. Hey, I finally found out where they're putting my radio show. It's right next to Sin City. Back there. Yes. Is that <laughs> is that by design? Yeah, or, did so. you, or did I think you it's request a hint. that? Yeah. Maybe it's wishful thinking on my part, but uh. I, I must applaud you, and I'm being very serious, uh, Clint. You bring the substance every Wednesday night to the program, and then you bring Sean along. That, uh, Good, good job, man. Thank you. you know, look, I have to keep him along because I know nothing about social media or how the Twitter machine works or anything like that. And he's he's that guy, right? <laughs> he has no idea what to talk about. So I end up having to program everything, and it's a lot of work. Well, look, Johnny it's Carson a had a work. sidekick, so it's, it, it's you, know, you know you've made it. Right. It's okay. It's okay. And we appreciate the chart that you left for us, too, so that we'll know what you want us to talk about. Yeah, well, no, no problem. It's uh, <laughs> you, Are you kidding me? We try and follow. We follow your show, and that's a very difficult thing to do. Oh, man, I hope not. <laughs> very difficult thing to do. And I have to say I was a little surprised. You are, in fact, black. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Well, uh, he's going through that chemical pill from Michael Jackson's doctor. That's my cousin Snoop and my uncle Sherman Hemsley. <laughs> money, money, show me money. <laughs> But, Clint, uh, listen, uh, election 2016, you're here at Freedom Fest. Did you expect all that we have gotten so far with Elvis and the rest of all everything that's happened to us today? I, I, I did not. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised uh, with, uh, with some of the folks we already have, have lined up to talk, uh, to talk with and whatnot, and with, with the turnout here uh, yeah. particularly. This is a great group of people. Um, good friends here at SHR Media uh, that uh, that uh, fortunate enough to be here with, and and I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the next few days are, are going to be. Uh, please tell uh, Sean. Uh, hopefully, this is not on the air, but please tell Sean to stop ordering drinks. Uh, well, here's the thing, right? I mean, uh, I think we're going to go straight to a sackheads after dark. <laughs> the way Sean's been drinking, and I think I, I'm going to have to catch up with him at some point. Oh, I thought it was because of Ken. <laughs> Ken, Ken always yeah, brings after that. After dark, yeah. Ken always brings that. Well, yeah, because we were after a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there, was, there was no why the There was no why at the end of that. You there know, was he just... was actually jacked up by the TSA today. <laughs> that, uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to know what he had on his palms. They did. Yes. I, I've been wondering what he's doing. Literally, yes. I, I, I was going through, my wife went through TSA. And they loved her, you know, no pat down. Oh, hey. who, who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I thought the guy was gay. I mean, I would have patted her down. But right. <laughs> and you have, I hope, right? Well. I do it often. Thank right. You. Good man. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have been doing that in line. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and I come through, and all of a sudden, the chick behind the security personnel takes a look at me and goes, I need to see your palms. And I'm like, like I stopped doing that in high school. So <laughs> You started going blind. <laughs> That's why I wear glasses. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank You're you. Welcome. Finally a pure one. <laughs> That's, you found that's, the last period. That, that's what the listeners think when they think 
SHR, yeah, the pure ones. <laughs> the pure right you see how much hair is on his palms? <laughs> <laughs> and wow. that was after the trim. <laughs> <laughs> That's manscaping, dude, manscaping. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Look under the nails. No, uh, hey. <laughs> so what did he want to see your palms for? I don't understand. Oh, the gun residue. What, gun residue. Yeah. Did you tell him I'm a red-blooded American if I want to fire a weapon before firing an air, mm-hmm. flying well, an airplane? Well, how could he? He's in Washington, D.C. It's not legal. <laughs> Why would they <laughs> test for something that's illegal? Like that? That's a good yeah. point. You know, I, so did they assume because you were black you were breaking the law? Well, well, actually, they did ask me if I crossed the border illegally, but uh, I presume, yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So I just want you all to know if you are one of the the uh, soulful wonders who had to have your palms tested by TSA, <laughs> uh, you join a very special crowd of people. Elite, I would say elite. Elite. Yeah. And uh, the good news is he's going to have two uh, two children. He's going to have a long life, and he'll have a love of his life. So. <laughs> Uh, they read his palm after they were done with it. And you want order number 17, Kong Pao. Uh, love, you, love you long time, G.I. Love you long time. Oh, my God. This show is totally off measure. Uh, you are Your regular listeners are like, what, what am I getting into? I know. Both, both of them are probably freaking out right now. Yeah. See, that's why we don't let Ken travel. He's been drinking. <laughs> but I, I love I love this atmosphere of Freedom Fest. All of these great people. Uh, Steve Moore is just walking around. Yeah. I mean. What was he going to do? Colonel Allen West. Colonel Allen West. Armstrong Williams. Yes. Uh, they're all just walking around. And you're, you could talk to them. And they're. They're good people. And there's other neat things, too. Like, for instance, I went over there, and they have a bookseller, and I found they had one copy of the Magna Carta signed, and I bought it. Wow. (laughs) Oh! Yes, and they're mailing it home so I don't damage it in my suitcase or TSA borrows it or anything. So, yeah. Yeah, that's outstanding. You know, and I'm I'm impressed also uh, by just the the, 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 uh, uh, diversity of people here. And and I mean that Now the Ken's here. uh, Yeah. (laughs) I, I mean that in terms of I mean you, there's there's a there's a, a pro mar, a pro marijuana legalization group here. There's yeah. um, some some younger millennials here that, that we interviewed earlier. There's uh, there's just a, such a variety of people here, and it, it just goes to show you that not only from a conservative standpoint, but from a libertarian standpoint, that there really is commonality yeah. with with that conservative um, uh, libertarian based on a lot of things that we can agree on to get things done, particularly with the direction that both of the... Both you the know, to add on to that, now. not only the liberta- liber- libertines, libertarians are here, but there's the libertarian republicans are here also right across from them. Absolutely. And uh, which I didn't know there was an existence of. So yeah. it's, there's a lot of neat people here. Exactly. You, know? uh, you are listening to a commercial-free, yes. live... Commercial-free. Commercial. <sighs> oh, man, That is so free. anti-capitalistic, I can't believe it. You are listening to a commercial-free The Exceptional Conservative Show. We are live from Las Vegas, Nevada. We are, well, I, I'm three hours ahead here. Uh, you're listening to us reg time out in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, and so uh, I, I have the great honor of having Sackhead Clint, uh, Dr. Michael Jones here, Sacco, and some other guy in Seafoam uh, who's running around ordering stuff and the people. <laughs> and I, I have to say, when I first met the good doctor, I was a little nervous because he said, uh, "He said, trust me, I'm a doctor, right? And I need and, to, I need to verify." And I said, first, I'll do no harm, right? Yes. And, I, and, and then he said, "I need to verify you are in fact a sackhead," and yes. I, I was a little taken aback by that. Well, like I what, thought, I what, I, was, what got me going was the sackhead thongs that they're the, all sporting. Those are licorice, yes. <laughs> just so you know. Those they are, are flavored. Licorice. Yeah, they I found that out by accident. <laughs> What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Uh, they are on sale now in the lobby. Uh, some use, so be careful. <laughs> Show worn. Show worn. It's like game used. Uh, hello, hello, young man. How you doing? Come on, you're on the air. You're live Come on, Santa's from Nevada. All right. You're talking to Santa Claus right here. What's your name? Sammy. What do you want for Christmas? Ho, 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 ho. What? Okay, next. <laughs> what are you doing here at Freedom Fest? Did you get kidnapped? My dad. Your dad? Your dad. All right. Mr. Oh. Fuente. He's a thug. A thug? He's a thug. He's a doctor <laughs> lady. Boys from Breitbart News, isn't he? <laughs> of course they're thugs. Yes. Did they get shut down today with the uh, all the spoofing on the internet and computer problems? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> no. The, if, if Breitbart got shut down, I know we were in trouble. We are say so help, glad to have you here. welcome to Freedom Fest, everybody. Welcome to Freedom Fest, everybody. All right, good job. (laughs) 
see. Uh, we just got some. That's news. a Freedom Fest fan here. We got lots of those walking around. That's why we have the substantial yeah. one, uh, Sackhead Clint. Uh, and Sackhead Sean will probably join us here. Uh, when he's not being cavalier, running around and everything, and enjoying himself. I prefer willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than wet willies. Uh, but apparently, uh, apparently, Obama has met with Vietnam, Vietnam's uh, Communist Party head. Uh, and apparently, he's receiving some criticism on both sides of the party, but he met with uh, Yong Fu Tuong. Did I say that correctly? What's your name? I'm, I'm looking Nung for Fong Tong. Just say, just say commie leader. Commie yeah, leader. That's Wen Fu Tong. Gwen Fu Tong. That's number Trong. 18. Wen Fu Tong. That's number 18. That's number 18 with fried rice. She she come some of I don't know where you put your shami. Uh, but <laughs> Wherever the soy sauce is. Whatever the <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, um, it is a terrible thing when we have the president of the free world meeting with uh, Vietnam's uh, communist party. But then again, I, I mean, what's the difference? What uh, took him so long? You know, hey, you know, That's Venezuela, know. Cuba, come on. It's the end thing to meet with communists and Marxists and socialists. and. Uh, well, when you're, when you're one of them. Yeah, right. yeah it's like a party. It's, well, like the, a par it's like Freedom Fest, freedom but anti. It's the anti-Freedom yes. Fest <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's when when come when, on over and say that young lady, <laughs> and hold her spot. Don't I take her spot. It is Freedom Fest. This it is it, not like Freedom Fest. It is Freedom Fest. We're fighting for our freedom again. Amen. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. And where are you from? I was born in Austria. You were born in Austria. Yes. So okay. you, you believe in Austrian economics then? Yeah, of course. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, sure, I came to this wonderful country in '59. In 1959. Yes. I worked for a company for two years. That company went broke. Guess what? For two thousand dollar, I purchased this company. Okay. My children went to college. They became great American citizens, and so am I. Amen. This is a most wonderful country. Cherish it. Wait, no government help, no welfare? What's wrong I, with what you? What is that? Yeah. Amen. I mean, absolutely <laughs> not. This is America. <laughs> you right. have to work a bit, right? Yes. So what? Work is good for your mind, for yeah. your soul. Keeps you out exactly. Of God bless you God all. Bless God bless you. Thank you so God much for coming, for coming on the air tonight. What's your name? Marita. Marita. Marita Slavkin. All right. The oh. Sackheads, exceptional, and the professor. Definitely. Marita, everybody, from Marita, Austria. 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 An American success story. Listen, I'm, I'm telling an you, An immigrant American success story. That, too. Yeah. And an Austrian yeah. success story. An Austrian. Because that's where uh, Schwarzenegger's from, isn't it? I do my show They live. look a lot alike. No, no, they don't. Oh, no, they <laughs> did. She looks a whole, whole lot better than Schwarzy. <laughs> Uh, but I, I must say, I do the show live from Urban America every single night, except for Fridays. Uh, and Urban America? Urban America. That code for something? Yeah, that's code for something. But uh, I do it from Urban America. And there's so many in Urban America who have surrendered the right of work, that have surrendered the love of investment, that have desired for someone to do something for them that they can do for themselves. And this woman t tells you, I take $2,000 of my own worth, I invest it, in a business that's failed, I've turned it around. My kids have gone to college. This is the greatest country in the world. Why do we have hip-hop artists who are running around talking about this is the worst place to live, but don't mind making money off of the poor people who are well, here? Tell, tell me, Ken, where else can you do that? There is no other the, country like that. None. Maybe in China in the, in the capitalist section, but then that's the capitalist or section. Or maybe Vietnam. Well, now. <laughs> yes. um, but, Clint, uh, I want to ask you. Uh, are you finding this same rhetoric being spoken by lots of people here, not, and just diverse people here? Yeah, I re really am so far. You know, just with with various people we've had the pleasure of speaking with, um, you know, a lot of them they, they're they're saying the same thing. You know, they're saying the hey, this is about uh, not only our liberties and really the salvation of our country and the preservation of our republic, um, but this country has given us the opportunity to to do something and even to come together like this like i said with so many with so many groups that otherwise i mean how often are you going to have a, a republican group and a, and a pro marijuana group together with, with, together with and and, right. and happily together you know for for and 
that's one of the great things about our country um, that I love. And you brought up an interesting point. Again, I, I hate to keep going back to millennials, but went back to the millennials. And hey, how, how do you um, how do you bring the millennials to the table to get them to see that hey, this is a great country. We are invested in this. And well, you, know, you bring a, a show to Ur- you bring a show to urban America. How do you do that with with the folks in urban America as yeah. well? Uh, and so I think it's a problem. What is your that, name, sir? Hi, my name is Takoa De Silva. D- Mr. De Silva, you are a millennial, am I correct? Well, uh, you're, you're in that grouping. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Why are you here instead of smoking pot in Denver? Uh, why am I here instead of the smoking <laughs> pot in Denver? Smoking, hey, why are you here? Is, oh, instead. Is, is instead. Oh, instead yeah. of smoking pot in Denver. <laughs> yeah. Now I get it. Now I get it. Right, Great question. Go. Well, uh, I'm here to work. Uh, I'm young, and I'd prefer to exchange my time um, using it uh, for labor instead of sort of fooling around. Yeah. Uh, I do that for a few hours on Sunday every week. Oh, yeah, true. Well, but when I ask you, sir, as a millennial, do you believe that those in your age grouping uh, share your values and your principles for freedom? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think freedom is its such a fascinating word and it means so many different things to different people yeah um i feel like some people think freedom should be given to them that that it that it's an entitlement uh that should be you know given to you by birth and i can understand that viewpoint but i've also seen the the been exposed to the viewpoint where the viewpoint that freedom should be earned yeah and i i think i uh subscribe to that idea that okay. I think freedom should be bought uh, through uh, service of some kind. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, in, in terms of service of some kind, do you believe in exchange of your work and your labor for freedom, or do you believe that freedom is given to you uh, by your creator, and thus working is just a, you know, one of those particular things, that, a privilege that you do? That's a, that's a great question. Yeah. And I think it gets back Th- to what That's the, why I asked it. Yeah. <laughs> You, 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 are, you are on the air with well, the exceptional I, one, sir, just to give you a heads up. I think up. it, it uh, gets back to the definition of what freedom is. I yeah. mean, to me, I think uh, freedom, not only is it the right to say what you want to say and walk where you want to walk, but it's to me, it's the right to sit down uh, at a restaurant table that has a listing of foods that I might want to eat. And mm-hmm. I want the freedom to be able to, to choose whatever food is on that menu mm-hmm. without uh, being restricted to uh, a limited wallet. That means freedom to me, so I can identify with economic, financial freedom. Okay. Well, let me just ask you this. Uh, you are a young and handsome man. Thank You're you. You're here at Freedom Fest. Oh, not me. Uh, no, not you, Clint. I'm sorry. No, you've already got the numbers. The sorry. Yeah. Now, he's, a, he's our guest speaker right now, Mr. De Silva. Uh, what would you say to get more young people your age, especially ladies, uh, because that's all that matters, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, to Freedom Fest? What would you say to them? To get the ladies to Freedom Fest? Yes. Well, um, <laughs> don't don't do that. Don't. Let, yeah, but what, to get millennials to Freedom Fest, what would you say to them? Well, uh, I guess still thinking about the ladies. I, I think <laughs> I think by coming here, they'll become more attractive. Wow. Uh, one, they'll have intellectually. I like to talk this about. man. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, intellectually, they'll be more attractive and they'll be able to uh, carry conversations with maybe the kind of men that they might want to meet. And then secondly, there's yoga scheduled at 7 a.m. So they'll physically become more attractive, too. There you go. Two uh, big reasons. There's salads and vegetables, healthy food down here to eat, and there's great people to talk to. So uh, Like you, Mrs. You know, DeSilva. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. And go get your spot back. Thank take you, it, sir. Take it pleasure. back. It was thank rested you, from you. Oh my goodness, Sean Lewis getting ready to come back over to the mic. No, he's not. Kid Clant. No, he's not. Uh, no, he's not. No, uh, he's just cavalier again. Look at that, uh, just, Sean. Put the pants back on. <laughs> hey. Stop they said it was a party. I know Stop we're in Vegas, but. Stop shaking your money maker. That, they said it, it, it's dude, a if penny. this is a money maker, somebody penny. owes me a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> it's a penny maker. So Speaking a penny of a hell of a lot of money, Chris Casey happens to walk past and no one knows money the way Chris Casey knows money how you doing Chris great Ken how you doing great wonderful to have you on the air finally it's been a long time dude yeah we, we gotta do it again soon we gotta do it real soon listen why are you here at Freedom Fest you know this is one of these conferences well let me let me back up with our philosophy it's a lonely business let's I mean 
we're we're not necessarily mainstream right now. We will be one day, but not right now. So it is fantastic to get out here and to meet like-minded people and to enjoy yourself. It's fantastic to be surrounded by and having real conversations about real issues with people. Exactly. Without people looking at you like deer in the headlights. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, really? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so you are uh, a, a manager at? Windrock Wealth Management. That's Excellent. right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and what are your services there? What, is, what does Winrock do that the mainstream won't do? Sure. Well, I mean, there's a lot of wealth management firms out there, right? Yeah. And, and they pretty much all parrot what the Federal Reserve says and does. And they, they believe you can't, you got to be in the markets. And when things like 2008 happen, that you can't see it coming. In reality, you can see it coming. And so we use a whole different economic philosophy that tries to protect people's portfolios from both inflation and recessions. Yeah. Now, uh, literally, there are some that believe that every seven and a half years there's an economic fiasco uh, or a calamity or a catastrophe, depending on who looks at it. Uh, that would be like 2015, right around the corner. We're overdue. We're overdue for one. Uh, what do you tell your clients uh, so that they do not have to worry about whether CNN's reporting what's happening in Greece or not? Yeah, well, I mean, we have all of our clients, what you would call underweight in the stock market and some various other investments, that are going to do very poorly in the next downturn. And so we believe you can't step out completely from some of these investments because you can't time everything. Yeah. But like you say, we're long in the tooth and things look very precarious right now the way markets are valued. Exactly. Chris can Casey. You tell us, before you leave, can you tell us what you think will happen when the government stops quantitative easing? Woo! Well, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> What that does, or what? What's going to happen? That maybe when? You know. Yeah. Well, any any. I don't mean like call it quantitative easing. I wonder how many you know brain cells and hours they spend trying to come up with that term. <laughs> Probably all, all they is, have between themselves, which is three, I believe, is the last <laughs> official count. They just burnt yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a really simple formula, right? There was X amount of money before, and now there's X plus Y, and. There's three terrible things that happen whenever you inflate the money supply. Yeah. One, you're going to distort interest rates, which ultimately causes recessions. Mm -hmm. Two, you've increased the quantity of money, which cheapens its value. That's inflation, as we all call it. And then three, you've distributed wealth from the people that get the money first to the people that get the money last. And so there's three horrible effects from quantitative easing, no matter the magnitude. Um, but given what's been done, you know, it's going to cause some real problems down the road. Chris, you're doing a presentation here, am I correct? Uh, this yeah, week? A couple panels, yes. Okay. Uh, how can someone who's on their way to Freedom Fest or hasn't really thought about coming but, you know, happens to be in the area, what should they do to get here and why should they come to your presentation? Well, first of all, I think even if you're not here this year, you can still view these presentations. I think you can order the, the tapes or, in fact, my firm will post the ones that we're doing uh, on our YouTube channel so it's, it's easy to access. But I absolutely I encourage people to come out here. I mean, there's well over 2,000 people here. It's packed yeah. Yeah. with just fantastic, absolutely fantastic presentations up and down every day. Exactly. It's bigger than it was last year. It really is. Chris, we love you, man. Thanks, uh, Ken. Glad right. to have you here. Chris will be with us hopefully later on this week. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, whatever works. Okay, great. Um, Thank you. We, we're going to need his insights. He's actually uh, going to be on the Sackhead show later on he's tonight. He's going to do, oh, oh, oh. He's now gonna, you're just bragging. He, exclusive. He, he's, he's exclusive to Sackheads. Isn't that something? Uh, he's me. only a regular guest on the Edge of Liberty. It's oh. not a big deal. Oh. Uh, at least somebody's regular around here. Ooh. <laughs> All my guests no show. Uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen. That's not, I'm what? here. I'm Clint, here. You sent me the text have, message and I came running. And you have the doctor. Literally. And yeah. you have the doctor here. Clinton and Mahatma Gandhi were supposed to be on here tonight. Yes. Gandhi said his car He's broke down. He's actually in the food line. <laughs> yes. He's in no, the food line? That's why it's all gone. No, that was I Sean. Go get something. Hey, hey, hey. No, that was you Sean. You can't prove it. You were sitting here while it happened. <laughs> hey, I got drones. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Live from the Las Vegas, uh, the Exceptional Conservative Show. I have my great friends with me today, uh, Dr. Michael Jones, Sean Lewis, Sakia Sean, uh, Clint, Sakia Clint, Sako. Oh, my goodness. This is just one of the great, wonderful experiences. We've had a chance to talk with Stephen Moore, Chris Casey, Elvis. I mean... Elvis was awesome. Has Elvis left the building? No, he's no. right over there. Right oh, over he is? There. Okay. No. Yeah. okay. Elvis good. has not left the building. Uh, Sean has stopped ordering uh, wine 
Uh, although <laughs> he switched to tequila. He's new to <laughs> straight tequila. I got it from the family that lives in the doctor's beard, <laughs> so I know it's good. <laughs> Uh, they I want their I, martinis shaken, not I, stirred. I, <laughs> hey, hey Doc, Doc, I love you on Travelocity. <laughs> did, did you get a good deal? I did, thank you very much. <laughs> I am telling you, and listen, I hope next year I come, my picture will be up there with Snoop Dogg and Sherman Hemsley. I, you know what, you now what I have it? I'm going to make sure that next year, your picture will be up over their it, faces. It may, not, it may not be framed, but it'll be up. <laughs> It'll be up. There may be a phone number associated with it. And the word wanted that. may be over the top. I'm right. just saying, it may right. say wanted over it. Be careful, because I brought his picture home and my maid quit. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know, listen, uh, Mrs. Biggs is here. Mary Brockman is stuck in Charlotte. Um, we are working on arrangements to get here. Did yeah. she fly an airline that got shut air, down? Now, yeah, uh, well, no, her airline didn't. Um, but apparently there were uh, a, a problem with her plane, um, so they're giving a new plane. It's a three-hour delay, so she won't get here till like See, 10 o'clock. I told you, everybody that flies on that airline have to pedal. <laughs> That's Spirit Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is she won't hit the stripper pole till much later tonight. Much yes. later. Okay. Yes. But she's really making That was Sackhead Sean. That was Sackhead Sean. <laughs> that put that out. Yeah. Sackhead Sean. That is not the official position of SHR Media or the Sackhead Radio Show or the Exceptional Show. Address your show. complaints. To Sacco <laughs> at SHR Media. I'm offended that Sean Lewis would come on the Exceptional Conservative Show and make those comments about Mary, my bouncer. Too. I don't even know what he means. Exactly. Yes. I'm offended that he doesn't know. How do know. you guys get paint off your wall? <laughs> you use a stripper. A stripper. It's a heat stripper. Oh, That's okay. what I told my ex-wife. It didn't. It, it, <laughs> yeah, I'm but, a reasonable woman. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the, hang on a your second. Your stripper was actually Ooh. named Candy versus Black and Decker. <laughs> yes. Why'd you point to Ken Why when you said Black and Black Decker? And Decker. That's what I want. And did you see his did little sausage finger, finger come out? Did you I see the way that. he? Po did you see the way he pointed no, at I me? Did. That said, was his finger. He said, "Yeah, that black. was his finger." And black, like held on to black and then I a long pointed time. To Clint for Decker. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Like he's expecting me to do something. And I'm I would never strike you, Ken. I, I, I this is ridiculous. You. I'm just pointing it out. I'm, I'm trans and, bovine. And, and now all of Ken's listeners know what a racist you are too. They don't have to hear our show tonight. <laughs> when, when Ken got married on his nuptial night, Mrs. Big, he yeah. told her, he says, look, it's okay if you laugh as long as you don't point. So <laughs> don't <laughs> That's called compromise, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ken, your uh, show is usually not downhill like this. No, it's not. No, it's not. You, you were having you were having an after night or, or an after dark episode, I, I believe. An after dark episode. Yeah. Uh -oh. Did Sean tell you to say that? There no. <laughs> no, I. Wait a minute. This is the Duck Dynasty guy they were talking about. Oh, wait, go, what do you mean? Cool. I, how did I get involved in this? <laughs> because you made the racist remark and pointed at Black. Ken. Black. I'm getting in the booze line. And Decker. Yeah. yeah, rum and coke, please. Yeah, that'll 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 help. <laughs> hey, and there may be another Baptist around, so Clint can't drink. Hey, and, <laughs> and please put away that st that Confederate flag. Star Parker's here. Uh, listen, I was cold and I needed a sweater. Okay. <laughs> You're talking and, about. And, and we haven't shaved Sako yet, so we couldn't weave one. <laughs> Sean said he was going to have a picnic with Star on that. <laughs> it's about oh all you can God. eat. I don't know. Listen. Oh, oh my God. I'm still light. Chris too. is the man. He's Baptist. We, I'll take it. We <laughs> talk about, when Thank we you, talk sir. about economics, Chris we just is got the free man. beer. He's teaching us how to grow our money. This is socialism, isn't and, it? Right? And I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hang on. I'm about to Trust show me, you. Chris I'm about, wants you to do something when he finished. <laughs> I'm about to show you trickle down economics as I take a drink of this. It's going to trickle down my trickle throat. Down <laughs> trickle down beer. Yes. Listen, we are not drinking beer on a terrestrial radio station. This is internet radio. That's right. We can do whatever we want. We, whatever we want to do. And we do we anyways. Do. Yeah, it's if, our network. For if this was sake. terrestrial, we'd have to put pants on. Right. <laughs> exactly. Now, all these rules that we just don't just agree with. Which is funny because I just got a message asking if my pants were on. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're live. True story, just to verify right there. So, <laughs> yeah. so if you're listening and you're at Freedom Fest. Did I like it? Number 614. You may want to avoid hey. that. At all costs. Yes. And I want you to know and that we need all, a mop. Of the, all of the guys that told me not to stand up because they will be certainly uh, offended. Yeah, I'd be embarrassed. Oh, yeah. now all of a sudden, yeah. now some now stereotypes now are okay, right? right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, some stereotypes I'm, are I'm okay. I'm offended by that. 
Yeah. Let I me, resemble that remark. Let me unwrap this. Yes. No. <laughs> he, he keeps bragging about how he passes out. You know? That's because he's tired. <laughs> well, he never he does his show if his eyes close. Well, he, yeah, he has out. to, right? Yeah. He doesn't lift with his knees. That's why he has the back brace on. Oh, is that it? <laughs> I thought those were suspend, like Mork and Mindy suspenders. No, the back brace. That's his Urkel kit. No, this is how a wife, <laughs> listen, this is. Women, women, you all work too hard to try to keep your man uh, in, in faithful to you. What you do is you dress him and send him out. No woman in her good mind would date a man who's dressed this way. That's right. She dresses, <laughs> she dresses you so you'll stay uh, celibate. That's well, right. Yeah. Well, that's a, there's no competition. Zero. Zero competition. She knows. She knows. Well, I keep telling her to go ahead and dress him sexy because uh, there's someone in the wings waiting. Hey, hey. But you know what? Here's the amazing part is when you meet Mrs. Big, which we did earlier tonight for the first time, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't that dumb. No. Uh, He's uh, got it made. No, and got she, it made. And she has the box with a minute. Yeah. So yep. it, it yes, can't she does. be too far. Well, yes, she does. Yes, she it's does. like an ankle monitor. Right. <laughs> you separate too far and it starts it pinging. It starts hurting, right? Bing, bing, bing. He's not going anywhere. He's not going so, uh, anywhere. We got Ken here. Not only is he looking like Ronald McDonald, but he's got Buster Brown shoes on. Buster Brown That's shoes. That's right. That's you just right. made a reference most people won't understand. So, <laughs> clown. Clown. There you go. Yeah, Clown I'm shoes. sorry. Clown shoes. Did I? Uh, I like my Buster. Brown. I wasn't sure if that, you know, little I people. My clowns. mommy dressed me this morning. I did not see them, <laughs> but I'm gonna get a picture of them for the internet. Well, they squeak to... when he walks. Right here. Right. <laughs> squeak, here squeak, squeak, squeak. Here you go. Right here. <laughs> there you go. Oh my God! Oh, it's right, not yeah, true. Yeah. Those are size fives. <laughs> <laughs> that blows that rumor. Oh well. Yes, we are debunking myths tonight <laughs> on Sackhead Radio, everybody. <laughs> I have to be a size He's five fucking. because that's uh, yeah. basically a ten of your category. It's the high heel that bothers you. <laughs> Are you transing on us? Are you using a slide rule? <laughs> it's a sliding scale anyway. I'm using socialist economics yeah. here. <laughs> Wait, is that an abacus? What is <laughs> that? I don't... Give a- Give her an, uh, but why are they all the same color, Ken? Why? <laughs> give why does it all have to be a black abacus? You can use other colors. Hey, you know, uh, my people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like Henry Ford. You can have any any car you want, any color, except you know, as long as it's black. As long as it's black <laughs> and, and as long as you got to rev it up and wind yeah. it up. That's Sean's motto. <laughs> <laughs> I wrap it up and wind it up. No, he can have anything as long as it's black. <laughs> <laughs> and once you go there. Well, hey, and he doesn't have that. to wind it up. It takes batteries. <laughs> <laughs> or a gasoline V6. Either one. <laughs> Shift, baby. Shit. Hey, that straight six lasts forever. No, I don't know how straight it is, but yeah. Did you notice that Sacco has uh, run away? No, Sacco actually. Is he out ringing the bells? He's not, he's mm-hmm. not dumb. He's smarter than the rest of us. Free beer. We're sitting here yeah. flapping gums with each other, yeah, and he doubled up. Yes. Dump, oh, two-fisted. How are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, we are having the most wonderful time here. Uh, and actually, <laughs> this is the PG-rated version of what we plan on doing later on. So <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how our show brings everything down, right? And, and half, <laughs> half of us here are reverends. Well, well here, here's, here's the thing, Sean. Here's the th- that's the difference <laughs> between... That's the difference between uh, 6 p.m. Pacific programming and 8 p.m. Yeah, Pacific exactly. programming. Exactly. We, we can have real fun. Right, <laughs> right. Listen. So, yeah. yeah, the uh, exceptional one can have intelligent conversation, and we just have to have poo-poo humor. <laughs> Essentially is what it comes down to. If you listen to my show, you're probably not dating. Well, <laughs> the good news is it only takes 18 minutes if you speed through the commercials. <laughs> I guarantee you at least five minutes of substantive talk. Oh my God. 45 minutes of We uh, had that early commercials. though. Earlier yeah. we had we that. Did. We had intelligent debate. Oh, real good. So Sackhead then, Clint comes on, the Portuguese guy comes weird, on right? and goes downhill, right? All of a sudden yeah, the nose comes action. back to the mic right. yes. and it's all downhill. Yeah, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I can class up the joint. <laughs> he did a great job. Listen, we will have very substantive interviews tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is also Chris Tonto Paranto Day on our program uh there will be a book signing 13 hours uh he will be here he is our hero from benghazi and we will be talking about benghazi hillary and anything else uh regarding foreign policy um that you wish we also will be getting hopefully the books in from uh marty hayes uh and marty hayes 
uh, is the author of Everything a Gun Owner Should Know About the Laws of Self-Defense. Uh, hopefully we're going to get those. We're going to be giving those out to all 250 individuals who come past our, our beloved uh, setting here that Saco so adamantly put together. Uh, and well, and that's an awesome, he's an awesome Matt guest because every Matt gun, Nye. every owner, sh every person should have a gun. Yes. And or two. That, or, or 15. Or yes. 75. 75. Do I have 100? 100. 100. 100. I got 100 down. Should be five. mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, you, you look at countries where firearm ownership is mandatory, yeah. essentially, and look at how low the crime rate is. Right. It, it's mind-boggling. It's not even a, it's, it's a no-brainer. Well, and yeah. I got to ask you this, Professor, and Ken, I'll ask you guys individually. Yeah, ask him. It's his show. Why, ask me anything. Why are you asking anything? This is Ken's show. <laughs> What are I, you doing? I must have bought the most lazy gun in the world because mine has never oh, randomly lazy gone up. Lazy ass Notice that none of my guns have ever he just did the same point of black. Randomly fired? Yeah, no, I, yeah, noticed. Yes. I noticed. Yeah. I noticed that. Sean, Sean, when you came walking up because you're wearing a red shirt and a red and black hat, he asked, I didn't know Ken was a blood. <laughs> he, did, he didn't either. It shocked the crap out of him when he saw it. <laughs> wait, wait till Agador finds out he is too. <laughs> you know, I, I have a concealed carry license, and I'm always armed because of the fat walls that have been declared against me. I seriously thought about not coming up here because the casinos you can't carry. Right. And, and so I was, I was like nervous. Yes, after I went to Washington and survived. You know, <laughs> At least I could blend in, in in Ken's church. No one really noticed me. Right. No, I can't yeah, imagine. Th right. No. I, and here yeah. too, you actually blend in very well. Very well here as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there uh, are a few looking mountain men out here. So <laughs> <laughs> See, I wasn't going to use the no, term Duck mountain Dynasty, men. Yes. Um, I, Uncle Jesse yeah. was one that I was going for. Uncle Jesse. Just so uh, good. Just, as long as you're not talking about Ventura, I'm okay with that. Yes. <laughs> no, you know, I no. think that's on there, Saco. If you're going to play that, he I, I think the uh, hey, sound guy. Saco could wake up. Yes. <laughs> Poor Sako. Sako, is, he's moved on to his second keg. <laughs> <laughs> Did we say Puerto Rican or Portugal earlier? Yeah. Portuguese. Portuguese. Because at Portuguese. least you guys have Portuguese. Lancer's wine. You've contributed something yeah. to society. Well, that's yes. not true. We had navigators, right? But we just couldn't do anything else well, no. with it. And you couldn't do very good that. You didn't even get to America. Right. Over there. Yeah. They were Over close. There. Yeah. They were close. Yeah, it's, yes. it's somewhere. <laughs> and then you got, you know, and that's something that I love about Columbus Day is because they have actually figured out something and they don't want to teach this and that is that it, it was uh, when they got there we got smallpox from them and took it back to the old world we didn't bring it to them and but, they're not teaching these but things. we saw that with yeah. the bubonic plague and you saw that a lot in europe yeah. when uh asians started going into europe they brought diseases that there were no natural immunities, immunities for too, yep. you um, have that's just... how the bubonic plague took off so it, and the spanish actually brought it to the mainland uh, um, originally, right. when, when the conquistadors were here, and, and everyone blames uh, Columbus. Columbus for it, you know? right? All that guy was doing was looking to buy some cheap spices, uh, right. weed probably. He was weed. looking to buy some weed. cheap weed, yep. weed, and he ended up in North America. So yeah, yeah. Back, I have a question. Back then, though, they called weed was ch it was tobacco, and that's exactly what they were hunting for was tobacco and spices. So, so conquistador sounds like Caucasian no. yeah. to me. It's Is that different? Yes, no, those totally are from different. the Caucasus. Okay. That's actually Russian Caucasians. Is it? I was wondering yeah, where Caucasia Caucasus. was. Right. Well, anything with a cock in it is a Caucasia? white guy. I yeah. just want to say here Cauc on, yeah, on I the speak Caucasian. Caucasian. conservative yeah. show, I speak a lot uh, of Asian. The show and, that oh. I used to actually operate in all. <laughs> uh, oh, congratulations a, on your patent. Don't, thank don't you. <laughs> thank you very it. much. We can hear you. Uh, Matt Nye, the chairman of the Republican Liberty caucus will be on Sackheads Radio this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that's 11 p.m. on the left coast of America. Where we Bill, are. Bill Nye? No, no. The Matt. science guy? No, no his no, no, brother, no. Matt. Unrelated. Matt. Unre unrelated. I asked that specific. Unrelated. Matt Nye, Very unrelated. Chairman. Oh, I, I thought I was being original. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking forward to that conversation. But there are so many great people here at Freedom Fest this particular year. Uh, this They have a record crowd. Uh, and a record number of presenters and speakers. Uh, and and I, I'm just enthusiastic about the entire experience. Uh, we're giving away books. Uh, we're giving away our time. We're giving away our sacred honor. <laughs> Actually, I gave that away on wedding night. Uh, <laughs> liberty and everything else. I uh, want to ask you gentlemen, 
uh, as we are moving forward in this particular liberty pursuit. Is there any hope for America uh, in regards to freedom and liberty? I want to start with you, Clint. You know, I, th I think there's hope for America in terms of our, our, uh, our, our liberties and our freedom. And change. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> Well, we do. We do actually need a lot of change at this point. Yes. Um, but I, uh, I, I think that I had this discussion with with uh, somebody a while ago. And, and forgive me if I get off topic a little bit here. But we were, we had the conversation. A friend of mine had the conversation of, well, you know, I understand not that he would do this, but he says I understand these people that are so frustrated. They just want to rise up and and do something in terms of, you know, um, uh, in terms of taking their their freedoms back. And I said. We, we can't do that. It, it, I mean, I said, if you look at the revolution and kind of how we, how we got our, our, our liberties, it wasn't um, just uh, armed people by themselves that took up arms and stood up against a government. It was, it was a, a group of people that did that, but they were represented. They did that with the consent of the people. Their elected representatives to, to these um, congresses that were banned, really prohibited uh, by, by the crown, and uh, with the consent of... The, the, the people that oversaw them, the, the, the Continental Army was overseen by a, rep, a group of representatives elected by the people. It wasn't just small groups of people that stood up and took up arms uh, by themselves. And that's the difference between an insurrection and a true revolution or, or a, a um, one where I think would be sanctioned where you have the Declaration of Independence, which one of our organic documents, which talks about the duty of the people to throw off a, a government that's become too oppressive. I don't think we're at that point now. I, I hope we don't ever get to that point. But look, how many people have openly talked about secession now? Yeah. And, and when's the last time we had that discussion or heard some of these things being openly um, discussed or constitutional conventions even? Uh, yeah. But particularly, the, I mean, some of the talk with, with elected officials out of Texas talking about um, secession and, and is it legal? And, well, yeah, there was, there was a reason Jefferson Davis was never brought to trial. They didn't know they could win it because they couldn't find anything in the Constitution that prohibited states from leaving the Union when they found it. And, you know, we talk about slavery. Slavery was certainly a, a, a catalyst issue in that. Yeah. But the real issue was, was do states have... Um, the ability or the authority to do that. So I had that discussion. And is there hope? I think there is. Um, I think the 2016 election is a lot bigger than a lot of people are making it out to be. Yeah. Um, I think that if another socialist gets in there, I think if another progressive gets in there, I think we're in a lot of trouble, particularly with the immigration uh, uh, lack of enforcement that we have now and the, the push to have those people really become voters. Um, yeah. And I think at that point we would reach a tipping point, almost a point of no return. And I don't know how we get back to that unless we tap into the millennials because the millennials are really un, un, unclaimed right now. Exactly. Um, so, yes, there's hope, but there's a lot of work that has to be done. And I think a lot of that starts with education. People don't understand. Professor, I think you could probably attest to this as well. People, in terms of education, our children don't learn why American, America is exceptional. Our children don't learn. I mean, they're reading Zins, a people's history of the United States, instead of true history books or even the writer's document, the founder's documents themselves, their own writings. They don't go to source documents. They rely on interpretation. They're studying Mao. They're studying, and, and they're, they, ha they have these people as, as heroes, as true revolutionary heroes. Um, so I think there's hope. Again, I think there's hope, but I think there's a lot of work that has to be done. I think it starts with groups like this, people that kind of get together and, and talk from all different backgrounds. You know, talk about our liberties and our freedoms, not from a Republican or Democrat standpoint, but from a freedom standpoint and from a liberty standpoint. Because we can have Democrats and Republicans that agree on certain things, but but it, it, it used to be um, back where you had people wanted the country to go one direction. That we just had two different ways of getting there. But we had the same goal in mind, right. individual liberties and freedoms. We don't have that anymore. Yeah, we have statesmen back then. Yeah, they were. <laughs> but now we have people that are pulling us two opposite directions. You have one group that wants to pull us more towards socialism, another group that wants to pull us the opposite direction, and one group that just has their you know, heads in their you know, yeah. cranial rectal inversion. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so I think that's a fundamental difference now also, and, and rectifying that is going to be very, very difficult. Um, but I think it starts with education and people getting excited again. I don't know how to get young people excited about learning what our true heritage and founding comes from and getting the public engaged again as well and i think events like this really bring people together right. gets them excited but i don't think there are enough of them unfortunately um, so i think there needs to be more events like this to get people talking i mean you, 
used to go into to bars or restaurants or whatever, and people would be talking about the issues of the day. Yeah. Nobody talks about that anymore. People can tell you all about pop culture. I, I ate lunch today, and on the place map was a, a pop culture quiz. But mm -hmm. they couldn't tell you that Benjamin Franklin was not the pre a, 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 one of our presidents of the United States. You know, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't tell you anything about the man, you know, a great man. Yeah. Um, if I answered your question in kind of a roundabout way. You did a wonderful job. I think job. you answered every question ever asked. <laughs> Thank <Just> you. <laughs> in fact, Hillary will be hiring you for the next time she does an interview. Oh, she'll be, she'll be coming out as conservative. Yeah, what what you're talking about is so. called polar politics. You know, which is what they did during the constitutional debates. You know, people would go in each other's homes and they would talk and they would actually understand the Constitution and debate it to serious levels. Mm -hmm. But today, they, people just don't know it. And, and this is what we're doing. This is our parlor and people are coming into it and we're discussing this at a higher level than most people are used to in this country. And this is only one way of saving it and, and getting that hope back. And, exactly. But you've been talking on your show uh, about natural law and the, the fact that we are it, 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 we are no longer a constitutional federated republic. Oh, he said it. My tear. Thank my you. Tear in my because eye. I'm professional on my own show. Oh. <laughs> well, there's a first time for everything. I just had a professional moment. <laughs> I don't have those very often, but I did just have a professional my, moment. My, my probation officer said I'm not allowed to hang with professionals anymore. <laughs> Three times in its life. <laughs> but, I mean, we're here at Freedom Fest, and you're going to have a lot of people that go up on stage, and they're going to talk about, oh, how great America is. Is this America still, Professor? Oh, it's still America, but it's not, it's not got the freedoms and liberties that we grew up with. Uh, and that's the sad thing, is that the dynamics of the country have changed. The, since the inception of this country, there's always been one question being asked, and that's how much central government is required. Mm -hmm. And one side wants more, and the other side wants less. Kind of like the uh, Miller Lite you know, debate. Less filling or, or taste ah. good, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, sadly, the, uh, the taste good people are winning. The more government people are winning. And the, as, as we just heard from the sackheads there, that there's a major change, and that is that the conversation quit being about the level of government, and now the question, you know, how much central government, now the question is, is what type of government should we have? Should it be a free uh, government, a capitalist government, uh, one with a three-legged stool of freedom and liberty for religious liberty, capitalist liberty, and economic liberty. Exactly. I want to ask you, gentlemen, also, are, are, uh, today you were interrupted and ABC News wanted to talk with you uh, about the automation problems that we had with the airplanes. Uh, and Clint, uh, the stock market, because of technology issues, was shut down today after 223 223 years the stock market was shut down today because of technology issues uh, and I don't Wall believe Street it and, <laughs> so I don't believe it really I don't <laughs> I, and I look I'm, I'm, I admit I am not I'm not a huge Wall Street I don't follow Wall Street a whole lot but I think it's coincidental that um, Greece has had a very bad last couple of days uh, and that you saw markets in China start to go down and that our stock market suddenly went down for the first time uh, in, in history. Yeah. Uh, I only believe I, that because of all the other things that shut down. I, like, I just, yeah. Yeah, I, may, I don't know. So I, are, I have a hard time believing they didn't shut it down to... On purpose? Yeah. Are you trying to say that those people who happen to be crony capitalists on the stock exchange who have literally taking advantage of the wealth redistribution that has been floored uh, in, on the uh, stock exchange itself and kept it afloat for eight years. Are you trying to say that finally economics, natural economics, is taking hold and they're going to lie about technology? Are you saying that, Clint? I'm saying I find it very suspicious. <laughs> well, in any event, certain people are going to be able to protect their assets now. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying I own gold, silver, and lead. Bingo is what I'm saying. Bingo oh. and Kansas spam uh, and lots of lead. <laughs> but, but, I, okay. I have a sizable uh, uh, investment in debt. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in sincerity, uh, Professor, uh, are we looking at 
a total world financial market collapse eventually with all of the promises of debt in exchange for um, wealth? Yeah, I, I think uh, that's always a possibility, isn't it? If, if you want to create a state of nature so that you can redesign government and come in with a different or better solution according to you, not you, but you know the you, you know, you out there, those you peoples. You people. And, um, uh, and you want to do it without going full retard, then what do you do? You collapse the financial markets. And the best way to collapse America, who's heavily mortgaged, you know, in debt by borrowing, because we've been borrowing money like crazy, 40 cents on the dollar, and we're giving it to other people. Even our own enemies were financing, you know, the terrorists. Exactly. So after we've been so leveraged and then you start teetering something like Greece, then like dominoes, they'll start clicking over. And eventually someone's going to have to come in and redesign government. And I think this is what they're trying to do. Exactly. Tonight, we are live from Las Vegas, Nevada. We are enjoying opening night at Freedom Fest 2015. Uh, we are in preparation for uh, Sackhead's Wednesday night uh, debut uh, from Freedom Fest, uh, which begins at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, yeah, 8 p.m. out here. Uh, it has been a very long and dogged day of travel uh, with technology issues around the country and around the world, apparently, enough to shut down the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, but I, I am most gratified by the fact that I can actually be here with some very great people uh, whom I love dearly. Uh, and who are the voices, the Paul Revere's of capitalism, constitutionalism, uh, Christianity, uh, and as well, uh, what's the other C? Uh, capitalism, constitutionalism, Christianity, Christianism, Christianity, Christianism, and corn cobism. And corn cob <laughs> <laughs> Oh, smoke them if you got them. Uh, this is a commercial. <laughs> I've already forgot your four C's. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Christian, it's capitalist, Christianity, Christian, yeah. capitalism, con con constitutionalism, constitutionalism, uh, capitalism, uh, and uh, consternations. Uh, uh, con uh, uh, con Congresses. Yeah. No. Uh, Consternation. Oh my not. It's, it's, Constantinople's. It's, what, what else has a con in it? Con con. <laughs> That's a con con. Uh, constitution, capitalism. Creation. Uh, mm. No, no, not the creation one, although that's a part of Christianity. Well, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. It used to be. It used to be. Uh, what is it now? I, I've i forgotten my own C's. Can you believe that? I, I do. It's just... I wish I'd paid more attention to you now, because I could help you out. I know. I, I, I wish I paid more attention to me, too. <laughs> you finally got constitutionally federated republic, right? See? See? When you, one it, in with one, out in, the other. And out the other. Yeah. It's uh, uh, garbage in, garbage out. That's yes, right. Constitutionalism, <laughs> capitalism, uh, the, 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 the capitalism, and Christianity. Communism? No, no, no. I said them all. Oh, say it again. Uh, capitalism. Yeah. Constitutionalism. Constitu uh, uh huh. Christianity. Christianity. And what is it? <laughs> the four C's. The ladies four C's. And gentlemen. Oh my God. <laughs> Conscripts. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. Oh my God. I'm sitting here and I'm trying to. I'm stumbling over my own. It has really been a very long day, hasn't it? Um, um, Karen Simmons was supposed to be on with me tonight. Unfortunately, um, due to all the technical issues and things of that nature, and me basically uh, coming in at whenever I felt like it. Uh, prima donna. Prima donna that I am. You know, <laughs> I brought Elvis. I mean, yeah. um, let's see. Dr. Michael Jones sends me a note. He says... Uh, download. Okay, I'll have to get to that. Uh, get to that. Um, oh, I think it was the video I took for ABC News I sent to you. All right. Yeah. You did. How was that? Yeah, they had me do three or four of them. They kept saying, "Okay, now do it this way. Now get the crowd. Now do one of yourself with the crowd behind you." And uh, 
Wow. And, re and say that, you know, they didn't tell me what to say, but they said, repeat what you said on this video in that way and do it this way and horizontal it. And, <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I sat here, half my battery was gone. But <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ABC. But they, uh, they found me because my tweets went, uh, viral. went viral on the United thing. And then when ABC News jumped in, then United actually uh, tweeted me and got involved because I think they were a little concerned with what was going on. Uh, do you need a? Do you need any food, sir? Maybe yeah. something to drink? Well, they offered me help, but they didn't provide any. <laughs> but you know, here we are, right? Just like the psychiatrist yeah. did for APA and the homosexuality and, group, yeah. Where, yeah. trying to convert me. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, if you're going to delay people and shift them around and then put them in standby on other planes, the least you could do is buy me a sandwich when I'm in the airport all day. Yeah. And it's not my fault as a consumer. I get that they had problems technically with the computers. That happens. Okay, no big deal. Mm -hmm. But don't treat me like it's my fault. Yeah. You know, and they had one customer service agent, and, and then that one was getting mad because we were all mad. You know, there's 129 of us sitting there off of this one plane and there's every plane on United had this problem. One agent. That's ridiculous. You wow. know? Wow. And, uh, and so we were all pretty angry at, uh, at, uh, and it really funny two uh, two black ladies. And I only bring this up because I can't do the justice of their conversation, but one of them was my man's at home where he belongs. <laughs> Don't you be worrying about your man. And they got into a fight. I mean, it was, there were people up there holding cell phones and recording it. And oh I my. thought, I'll do that for ABC News, but I couldn't get over there in time. <laughs> but they went after. That's That was the kind of day it was. It has been a very long day. And the great thing, the most refreshing thing is to be around good family and friends uh, and good drink. Uh, it, it takes away uh, a bit of the dust uh, on the brow. Uh, let, let's see. What time is it now? Uh, because I'm so used to having commercials. Well, yeah. You know, I, I, I only coming up with 18 minutes of materials you you know, know. is really a stretch, isn't it? I mean, really. Look at Sako. <laughs> you know, over there looking like he's at a, at a prom and no one's asking him to dance. Yeah, in 15 minutes, yeah. uh, Sackheads Radio will be on the air. Uh, and they will be doing a bit more substantive work than I have done <laughs> uh, during my yeah, performance here radio. today. Ser I mean, they'll be doing very serious yeah. stuff. You know, stuff that makes you think. I, I've done nothing here to make anyone think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's that's mm -hmm. that's just hope uh, that, that you garnered something out of this particular situation. Uh, I've seen Armstrong Williams. I've seen. We've had Steve Moore here. Yeah. Um, we've had uh, Sean and Clint. Sean and Saco. Saco, Mr. De Silva. Uh, here as well, Mr. De Silva uh, gave us a millennial uh, point of view, uh, and, and there's so many others uh, that will uh, be coming up. Um, I want to also do something here, uh, and I, I need to get, uh, I need to send a note to Karen. I am so sorry uh, that we couldn't get Karen on the air uh, with us tonight. Uh, it is so good to have a producer for your show. Isn't that Isn't nice? Boy. These guys are spoiled. I tell you, I might do, I might join SHR Media after all if you have staff like this. I mean, you got Sako. Sako yeah. puts everything together for them. He writes their scripts for them. He does the research for them. Yeah. He gives them all of the points. Foot he lays rubs. it out on the chalkboard, what I, they're going to talk about. I saw him under the table giving Sean a foot rub earlier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sean, I, Sako does yes. everything. Oh, I'm sorry. They're standing right here looking at us. We're not supposed to be giving away trade secrets. Mm. <laughs> oh. Sako does everything. Promote Sako. And that last young man said um, that he thought people should work for their freedom and liberty, which I thought was odd. Yeah, did you? Yeah. I, I thought, I wanted to, uh, you know, he's over there trying to get one of those free little snack things or whatever, the uh, bacon wrap, what you would call it. Yeah, I don't know. But that, uh, see, see, I'm a natural rights guy, right? So yeah. I think you're, you're born with your, your liberties and your yeah. freedom. But he said you had to work for it. I was like, what, like indentured servitude? Wow. What did he mean by that? It's, it's a good thought. I mean, yeah. you know, think about this. You know, this is, I mean, I think you should work to keep it because they are right. so important. Well, 
He's right in that we have inalienable rights given to us by God. Right. And that is life, liberty, and pursuit of, of property. But, but he's talking, I think, about governmental rights and that you have to work to get those. Because he was talking about things like freedom to him was, was about being able to order different food on a menu. And I would argue that is a pseudo freedom. That's, that gives you the illusion of being free in this country and right. why most of America thinks they're still free. Right, which goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? A lack of understanding um, amongst many millennials of what our true fundamental liberties and rights exactly. are. Which and goes granted, back to what you were talking about. We need more educational outlooks like because I saw uh, yeah, I can't do it all no you can't but, but actually <laughs> but try actually <laughs> the two of you educated a group of Millennials that were standing right in front of us and they couldn't believe what we were talking about uh, and I'm quite certain that they have been uh, you know sedated with the idealism of appeasement so much that whatever the left teaches that's the truth and we're just trying to figure out a way of fitting in with them and what we're talking about is being actually radical and revolutionary and saying hey God's given you the rights and freedoms that you don't have to ask government for government's job is to protect them uh, right. and, 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 and picking up on that was so so I, I picked up on that too but I didn't want to challenge him but you used to say to Christianity was, a Marxist says that uh, Christianity is the morphine for the masses, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's progressivism today, and that progressivism mind numbs them, you know, down to where they feel good about themselves because they care, and that's good enough, and that's where it stops. Yeah, and, right. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't want to argue with the young man because yeah. essentially he's right, but, but he's not, and he's, that's yeah. the crux of the problem. Yeah. And, and, and that's the great thing about having uh, Sackheads Radio. And let me just take a few moments to do this. Uh, I've known Sean Lewis and Clint. Clint, what's your last name? Bella Burke. Yeah, good friend. Yeah, good friend. <laughs> yeah. I've managed I, to keep that off the air for like years, so thank you for that. I, I bring out everybody. <laughs> I'm outing everybody. So all you baby mamas who have been wondering where he is. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> Here it is, baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Funny you mentioned and that. And he will be, he will be staying <laughs> at so and so hot hotel. When he gets up out of the bed, you can get some hair samples. Uh, <laughs> and it might can, be sockos. I, I learned something interesting from the sockos, the sack heads today, not the sockos, the socko heads. I am so God. This yes. has been such a long. I am so sorry. No, it's okay. I am so sorry, man. Go ahead. Wake up, Ken. I know. I, I've been on an airplane for five straight hours listening to some kid oh. in front of me crying. Can you hear the violins? They're oh, kicking I'm in. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was on United today, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I learned something from the sackheads that Would I did learn? not know. Would that Muslims learn? invented using a sheepskin for uh, prophylactics. And the French, 200 years later, took it out of the sheep and, and made it an external thing. <laughs> what are those professional moments? We only learned that because Sako demonstrated it. Yes. <laughs> coming, coming up on Sackheads, Matt is, Nye. That's why he has two beers in his hand. <laughs> God. Those aren't beers. Uh, <laughs> woo! <laughs> woo! Uh, right, take it away, Ken. <laughs> How do you clean up after this? I mean... With a rag. With a, <laughs> with a towel, yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to San Francisco until I get my self-respect back. Uh, oh, yes. good oh, luck with that. Good luck. That's the worst city in the world. Yeah, tell me. But hey. Dirty. Uh, Just a dirty. I, I stayed. I was in San Francisco. I traveled for my other job. And I was in San Francisco. I was staying in the in Union Square. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a nice area, the restaurants and so forth. I literally walked out of my hotel. A historic hotel. It was, I mean, beautiful on the inside. Right. But I literally had to step over people because it looked like there a was third this, world, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, garbage and it smelled like urine and it just disgusting. I disgusting. was there for the Navy. The ships there. I had a. I, had a, I, was, I was a consultant with the Air Force. We uh, were doing electronic warfare things, and they sent me over there to consult with the Navy on a war game that we were going to do. And I so I got to bivouac over at San Francisco for oh. or San Diego. 
San Diego is beautiful. San mm -hmm. Francisco looks like a third world. Yeah, yeah. it does. It's ri ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you've been listening to NPR. Uh, this is the Exceptional Conservative Show. We are live from Las Vegas, Nevada. We are so very happy to have had the opportunity of talking with so many good people, quality people, human beings, people that love America, people that are willing to vote for Hillary because we don't trust her, people that care because they care. And so we thank you so much for tuning in tonight and listening to our program. I assure you that I will be well rested tomorrow for a very lengthy campaign of spreading the good news of conservatism throughout the entire free world. We will have great interviews with great people, and we will have it on this particular radio station, SHR, Stack Hits Radio, for the NPR person who really just wants to be radical enough to tell everybody that you have one conservative friend. We want to thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. <laughs> I don't know how long you could do that. <laughs> Oh my God! This has been a this has been an exceptional night uh, with some exceptional people. Uh, coming up at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, we will be going live uh, with uh, none other than uh, Sackheads Radio. Uh, one of the great things about this particular station is that it is an internet station. Uh, it is not donor supported. Uh, it is individuals who have given their sacred honor, their sacred liberty. Uh, what was it? They, <laughs> they have given themselves their sacred honor, their wealth. And what was the third thing? Their lives, their lives. liberty, and their sacred honor, not, and their wealth, their yeah, treasures. Yeah. yeah. The, these guys are doing that, uh, and we appreciate it, and we hope that you do too. Um, listen, tomorrow... July 9th, Discover the New American Dream. Book signing will be Chris Tonto Peranto. We hope for all of you who are coming down that you stop past. Uh, it's booth number 614. Uh, sign the uh, card uh, that we may welcome you and, and, and thank you for your support of our particular program. Uh, I'm encouraging you right now to make sure that you listen to WNJC 1360 AM uh, starting tomorrow as we will be going live. Uh, and also continue to listen to SHR Media. Uh, we will continue to go live all day tomorrow, uh -oh. all day on Friday, uh, and for a good part of the day on Saturday. Uh, listen, there's only one thing valuable enough that we are all willing to do uh, with sacrifice, and that is to spread, as far as we can, freedom. Uh, we have the ability to be free. We have the liberty to choose to be free. And until we do both, uh, this nation will always be needing a revival. Uh, for all of you who have tuned in tonight to listen to us, I really appreciate it. I want to give a pause so that we can make a transition to Sackheads Radio. Uh, I want to thank my very good friend, Dr. Michael Jones, uh, who came in uh, via ABC's uh, work for United Airlines. Uh, I want to thank Sackhead Sean. I want to thank Sackhead Clint. Uh, I want to thank, I really want to thank Sako in all seriousness. Sako has just uh, been an angel, a messenger, uh, and a man who has put together one of the great sound systems uh, that we can listen to. Uh, and I, I am dutifully honored to just be in their presence. Uh, there will be others uh, that will be coming in uh, as we see fit uh, and know, but I want to make certain that you stay tuned. Uh, st and if you're in the chat role at SHR Media, I don't know if we are, um, but go to the chat role right now at SHR Media. Uh, get ready, get ready for a wonderful, wonderful program and a wonderful show. Final word, sir. It's better to be brave. Amen. Than to die a coward. Amen. Hooah! Hooah! Thank you all so much for listening tonight to the Exceptional Conservative Show.